Wow, here we are again, folks. Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. I had to turn my camera around because the sun was coming in a window where I was, and it uh, kept me from being able to uh, uh, do myself uh, on the uh, computer. So here we are again. It said, On the third day there was a marriage in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also uh, was invited to the marriage with his disciples. So here he comes, him and twelve disciples. So uh, in John 2, 1 and 2, he says here, a wedding, that was the scene of the first miracle of Jesus. There John tells us that he manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Now, he needed a link in his chain to bind these guys that he had called to be his disciples. And so here he is in Galilee, he's by the lake, and he's in Canaan, and he revealed his sovereignty. He was sovereign in God, if you please. He did, he did, uh, he wanted no one else could do. He did what no one else could do. Uh, he made the wedding joy complete. He still does, by the way. He still is turning water into wine for you and I every day. What he's doing is he's meeting the need. That's what he showed there, was that he met the need of the hour. And where he is known and loved as king. And where two lives who love him and owe him his and own his control are being joined together in holy matrimony. He still shows his glory and demonstrates his power. And by the way, the institution that God ordained was a man and a woman being married and staying together from the day they say, I do until death does us part, and they mean it until death do they part. And they do not part for any other reason than that. What has happened today in America and around the world that people have got within themselves and think that they're the ones that need to be pleased. <coughs> when the truth of the matter is, if a man please his wife and if she please him, there will never be any party. It's when one wants to be pleased above the other. And say, it's going to be my way or the highway. Well, you just go ahead and say that. And you'll be saying that time and time again. And you'll be like some other people being married four, five, six times and then will nobody have you. Because they'll put you on the highway. And uh, a wedding is, of course, uh, the uh, consummation of a process uh, begun sometime before and during the process. Christ must be consulted at every turn of the way. Now, if you're planning to get married, you need to uh, consult a preacher. You need to talk to the preacher. You need to find out what the duty of a man is who gets married, and a woman needs to find out what the duty of a woman is that gets married. <coughs> I was married some 60 years. My wife died with cancer, and now I'm this year in April, and now here I am, back myself again, and uh, do I miss her? Of course I miss her, but I've got to go on. He must be Lord at every stage. He's the Lord of my life, whether I have my wife or not. For he has planned the best for his servants from all eternity. Now, he evidently knows what was best for me, whether I know it or not. He knows the one that we should meet and love. This is just part of his wonderful uh, sovereignty. He reveals to us the will of God. He will leave nothing to chance. He will at the right moment and in the right manner lead us to the person of his choice. Wait for his will. Young people who have not yet met the one who will be their helpmate in life need to pray for him to hear him or her and to do so daily. We would uh, spare ourselves a thousand ills if we would only wait patiently for him in his own time. He will make everything clear. 
God gave me my wife. He gave me that woman, the perfect woman. She was a perfect woman, a perfect mother, a perfect housewife, a perfect worker, a perfect home provider. We go and work eight hours a day, nine hours a day, come home and the house would be spotless, cleaned, everything, meals cooked, all of that. Do above and beyond her duty. And there are some for whom the Lord does not uh, propose marriage. This is he who is made very clear when the Pharisees asked him, for who's ruling a law of Moses regarding divorce? And he replied, it was because you know so little of the meaning of love that Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But that was not the original principle. Later his disciples said, if that is a man's position with his wife, is it not worth getting married? It is not everybody who can live up to this, replied Jesus. Only those who have a special gift. For some are in, in capable of marriage from birth. Some are made incapable by the action of men. And some have made themselves so for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let the man who can accept what I have said accept it. Matthew 9, 8 through 12 in the Phillips translation. We see there were eunuchs. This is a man who is given to the Lord and the Lord only, and he's not going to involve himself in marital matters or in, in sexual activity in his life. He's going to give himself wholly to the Lord. It is not everybody who can live up to this, replied Jesus. Only those who have a special gift for some incredible, incapable of marriage. Okay, in Matthew 9, 8 through 12. But our Lord explicitly says that there are some who will, their, the sake of the kingdom of heaven, renounce the marriage state. There are some. By the way, I know a man. As a matter of fact, I know a couple of men who are not married and are given to the Lord and they follow the Lord and they're very special people I will actually our song leader is 25 years old <laughs> has kept himself uh, to the Lord has not involved himself with women and <clears throat> has uh, is following the Lord to the best of his ability and that's his his desire is to follow God. Maybe he'll to put a woman in his life one day. But right now his desire is to take care of the music and take care of following God. The sake of Christ in this is, as all other things, he must be Lord of your life. When he is, is allowed to be our master in this most sacred of relationships, we can be sure he will reward us most abundantly. But the wedding day has come. The first guest invited has been the Lord Christ himself. He will be the master of all the ceremonies. Friends and relatives come from far and near. And the uh, organ uh, uh, peals forth its music of joy. And the sanctuary is filled with the sense of the uh, presence of the Holy Trinity. That's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, still in the pure espousal of a Christian man's mind, the Holy Three are with us, and the threefold grace is said. John Keeble. <laughs> He's talking about you're supposed to be man, the woman, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The service proceeds. Marriage is a holy state of life instituted by God and blessed by the Lord our Savior Jesus Christ. It was ordained in order for the natural instincts and affections given to us by God might be fulfilled in a perfect way. And that uh, thus the, in the holiness and purity of living mankind might dwell together in families according to the will of God. 
Now, marriage was ordained by God. Adam and Eve were to marry and to have children. And those children were to reappropriate and have more children so there'd be children on this earth so that they could be followers of God so that when the whole thing is wound up, God has a heaven full of people. Now the devil come along to rob those people from God. Therefore, in order for God to get the number in heaven that he wants, he has probably had to make this earth last longer than he had really planned to make it. And so, if heaven's 1,500 miles square, which it is, uh, or the uh, city of Jerusalem in that area, is a, in a 1,500 mile square area with gates of pearl and whatever, and if it had levels in it, it would have a place for billions, not millions, but billions of souls of people. And God planned for it to be full. So until his timing, his timing is... I'm filling up this place. And it looks like it might take a whole lot longer than I had planned for those who have decided that they didn't want me, but they want to die and end up going to hell with the devil. So they're not going to be here anyway. So uh, we perhaps here are longer than uh, was really planned. We have to learn this from Christ alone. He authenticated the biblical relationship given in Genesis narrative a one created them as beings male and female created he them for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother cleave unto his wife and the two become one flesh so they are no longer separated people but one no man therefore must separate what God has joined together Matthew 19 4-6 in the Phillips uh, it is uh, <clears throat> obedience to his direction uh, that his holy union of two lives the bridegroom and the bride should be uh, consummated in this way <clears throat> and it is the greater joy then that to the sharing of such a wedding with Christ his Lord both of the bride and the groom is there pure a prayer that we can offer than this a perfect love, all human thought. Transcend lowly, we kneel in prayer before thy throne, that theirs may be the love which knows no ending, whom thou forevermore dost join in one. And that was written by Dorothy F. Uh, 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 Gorney. Uh, <clears throat> when... Uh, when, 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 when rightly prepared, a Christian wedding can be a vital ministry of evangelism. The recognition that follows the toast and the conversation and the final departure of the happy pair should be worthy of all that have gone before. And should it not be so when marriage is the holy marriage upon by the eternal spirit, to satisfy the um, marital union between Christ and his church. There is the marriage of his and um, own dear children. Christ longs to manifest his glory. He always does when given permission. Uh, by the way, uh, the permission of the Oxford Press was this piece used. But this um, tremendous day of the wedding is only the beginning of an eternally new way of life for the married couple. Is there any one rule that should be followed more than another? Of course there is. Let Jesus Christ be king in every detail of your life together. Thus is very uh, uh, partial counsel. You must listen to his counsel uh, from the Bible. The biblical counsel given to the husbands and wives, almost endless. No part, however, is without significance. There is a very special direction given about the physical aspects of marriage. Perhaps the most important part of this counsel is contained in the opening verses of the seventh chapter of Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. This entire chapter in J.B. Phillips' translation 
reveals how thoroughly and yet how tenderly God guides his children in marriage to a made one. This is a divine, authentic one and makes one. And due uh, consideration must be shown by each for the other in every relationship and through every day. There is particular guidance given about the right uh, mental attitude of marriage. The husband should give to his wife what is due. In the Bible it talks about due benevolence as his wife. And the wife should be fair to her husband. Paul concludes further in this letter to Colossae. Wives, adapt yourself to your husbands. Don't let bitterness, well, in, in the Bible it talks about clamor and whatever, or resentment spoil your marriage. Chapter 3, 18 through 19 in the Phillips translation. One might be uh, uh, bewildered that the joy of the wedding day could not descend to the conditions where the husband is resentful and bitter to his wife. But we are sinful people and we can easily fall. Only by keeping close to the Lord may he know his victory. Only thus will the Lord will our homes be free from tension and strain. When Christ is Lord of our home, we do things together. Planning vacations, entering, uh, into entertaining friends and strangers, manifesting the love of God in a thousand tiny ways. My wife was a very, very, very uh, intricate woman in tiny ways. In tiny ways, she always expressed her love to me in many, many, many tiny ways and in big ways also. Then we should add another biblical emphasis. The Bible is much to say about financial aspects and true marriage. What a picture is given in the 31st chapter of the book of Proverbs of a wise mother, wife, steward, family purse. Would uh, there be more spirit to, to, today? Uh, one great reason for the division and breakdown among young couples today is uh, the right election of money and financial responsibility. This should not be and need not be. Christian couples do not do things together. Therefore, they budget together and pray that their mortgage, pay their mortgage together and they buy groceries together. Simple, of course but oh so wise. To all this we should add that the Bible naturally tells us much about spiritual aspects of marriage. How is Christ should be best glorified in our home? By reading his word, by casting all our daily needs upon him, by asking the, uh, for uh, direction in every detail and by making his service our uh, one delight in the marriage where his counsel is fallen, his glory will surely be revealed in that marriage. So much for that. Uh, God is with us in our marriage. He is right there. And he will help us hold it together. Uh, my friend, if you are watching this, and you're married, be careful to keep your marriage the best you can possibly keep it. Uh, quit thinking just about yourself. If you're a man, think about your wife. If you're a wife, think about your man. Do everything you can to please that situation so that everything else will fall in place, and it will. If you do not please that man or that woman does not please that man or the man does not please that woman, everything will be helter-skelter and it won't be wise for you to be in that position. So, get in the Bible, find out what God says about it and follow that and he will uh, meet your need in your marriage. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.